Hey! We're here. We're live. We're in Tony Stark's workroom. I'm working on his computer. I'm very excited about it. We're going to be uh, doing some flats here today. I'm like trying to suck down the very last of my caffeine here. I've been trying to break my schedule. Um, I've been doing this like, so I used to just sleep whenever in my twenties and now I'm trying to like actually be up on like a regular schedule because I'm trying to gear up for the year of sketching and I'm trying to like adjust my schedule so that I have time to actually do sketching. It's a security violation. It's, it's not. He invited me here. It's fine. I know Tony. He's a good guy. All right. So let's, uh, let's get into some Photoshop. So um, I got two pieces that I want to work on. We got a, a Mr. Miracle here. As per, like, the theme of the stream, I guess, like... This is like the third New Gods, like, Mr. Miracle thing that I've done on stream in like two months. So, yeah. But we're also segueing into like a ton of Batman stuff because I, I'm i like sitting on, I'm sitting on a Batman piece by Drew Moss. I'm sitting on a Batman piece uh, by my buddy Gavin. And, I'm, and now we're going to work on this Batman piece by Brent. And it's like. I guess you guys are just going to have to get used to Batman, I guess. Eh, eh, whatever. Let's jump right in. Um, all right. Set it to CMYK. We'll do the easy one first. This guy is a little less complex than uh, the other one. Um, even if it is, like, as you can see there, it's, like, gray-toned. Um, there are a lot of, like, little little gray pixels in here um that's fine we're gonna we're gonna preserve everything um we should flatten this i don't know why it's on an it's on a layer we're not making anything transparent so might as well flatten it um let's copy it paste it all right preserve the line art that is critical critical to this whole process so since it is kind of uh, grayscaled, we are going to just wash it with a color because we're not going to be able to do any of our like little tricks. I mean, we still might. I don't know. Um, by the way, this is also Batman with two handguns because when Batman was originally made, my dog just heavy sighed. I don't know if you got that... <laughs> Like, I'm about to talk about Batman, and my dog is like, here we freaking go. <laughs> Just no support in this household. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but yeah, in the in the 30s, or I think the 30s, when Batman, what is this, Batman 1939 commission? Yeah, when Batman was in the 30s, he when he was originally made... He was like a gun wielding psychopath and he uh would kill a lot of people. So that was a thing. Not really what Batman is today. Although maybe it kinda is. I mean they've kind of taken him back to his roots in the movies. Um let's uh let's select I think like all the work in this whole piece is Batman basically we've done like all the background already uh I guess we can we can punch out the um lights and everything back here so let's do that like do all the buildings in like one shade I guess um so uh yeah I, I'm like trying to keep keep with the Christmas schedule and also trying to like wake up early and so now i'm just like exhausted all the time <laughs> it feels like that 
Uh, it's because I'm only like four days into waking up early. And by early, I mean like seven o'clock in the morning. Um, my plan, my plan is going to be to do uh, one, uh, to wake up every morning. And like, this is time that I would normally just burn. Like, you know, like when you, when you have like so many hours in the day, um, I was, I was doing like, here's the thing. Let me come clean with you guys. I'm a, we're going to get real. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to come clean with you. Um, I spent a lot of time sleeping <laughs> and I do spend a lot of time sleeping. Uh, it's not, not a good habit to get into. Um, at any rate, I, uh, I just, I, there's like, my brother is like this and my sister is like this too. I don't know if like, I, you know, there's like chemicals in your brain that get released when you go to sleep where you like, it paralyzes your limbs so that you can sleep, you know? Um, and, uh, my brother and sister both sleep really hard. Like I do, like I am a hard sleeper. Like once I'm down, I'm down and it takes me like, like my fiance can like wake up and like, start doing tasks and and i'm like i wake up and i'm like not a person for at least a half an hour like i can't like make decisions i can't like you can't ask me anything like it's it's really is a mess um all right we've we've done the buildings we've boxed them out um and we're just doing flats so we're not going to be actually like these, these aren't final colors, so we're not going to do purple sky. Although we could do purple sky. I don't know. We'll see. Um, let's, let's make it different than the buildings. All right. Now let's do Batman. We're going to put him in gray. Um, but yeah, I'm like not a human being. Uh, no. Oh God. Boyks. They're not final colors. Please. 12 out of 10. All right. Then they are final colors. You convinced me. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to wake up early and my plan, my plan is that like, I'll wake up early every day and normally this is time I would burn. Usually I'd get up at like nine or 10 o'clock, right? And, and kind of like start kind of putzing around my day. Usually I start coloring at like 11 because I have to like answer emails, do that sort of thing, you know? Uh, but, uh. So my plan is to wake up just like a little bit earlier and get my, get my sketch done for the day, like warm up, start thinking about art, start thinking about craft, you know, and maybe train my body that is constantly betraying me to like actually wake up and complete tasks in the morning. Um, we'll see, we'll see how that goes, but yeah, it's part of the, part of the sketchbook challenge, which you guys should join in on the sketchbook challenge where I'm going to do um, one sketchbook page a day for the whole year, hopefully. And uh, it doesn't have to be like publishable things. It doesn't have to be complete thoughts. It doesn't have to be like, you know, really anything. It's just got to be like, this is all just like a way for me to a like sit down and start drawing again. Um, and B kind of put my money where my mouth is like we talk a lot on the stream about like you just go like there's no secret to coloring you know there's no secret to uh you know getting uh getting into comics like you just start making comics and you make bad ones at first and then you make good ones and you make better ones as you go like that's just kind of how it is and um, I'm excited about comics and you know, I, I, so I'm sitting here from like a position of authority being like, you know, with like a career that's, that spans over a decade. And I'm like, all you got to do is start going, you know, like, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm kind of putting my money where my mouth is like, maybe eventually we're going to work up to doing some comic books on stream. Maybe, 
we'll see um but for now we're gonna we're gonna just try to do sketchbook page a day and um i might stream it occasionally if i get like comfortable with doing the sketchbook pages um but for now they're just going to end up in the discord which by the way the, there's a link in the discord in my uh twitch.tv slash nick phil page let me let me give you that that page it's right up there in the corner right right up there twitch.tv slash nick phil um if you scroll down on it uh you can see there's like a bunch of links some go to like my amazon page that has like a bunch of my books um you know and then like others go uh one go, one labeled discord goes to the discord and in there is like a sketchbook uh section and we're gonna be doing sketchbook stuff so yeah right that scene is good i i was thinking about like where would you want to make comics tony stark's lab so i'm working on i'm working on green screen stuff yeah there's a bunch of stuff like I was actually going through um, Twitch does this thing. I think you were talking about it, Boyks. Um, like the year in review or whatever, um, or the year in clips. They give you like, like put together like a little montage for you. Um, and uh, I was like clicking through it and like, I've only been streaming for like six months um, and I don't stream every day, but they were like, yeah, that thing was kind of neat. Yeah, it was the first thing they did. First year they did that, as as far as I know. I mean, I've only been streaming for six months, but I never saw any other streamers like talk about it. Um, but the thing that was really neat was, like, you could see, like, you know, I started streaming and my video quality was was bad and my audio quality was mediocre. And then, like you know uh you could tell like when i got a nice camera and when i got a decent microphone and like you know the, the when the green screen popped up and it was it was kind of neat so i don't know i feel like the quality of the stream is moving in like a good direction uh and i'm excited to do more more stream stuff um speaking of before i break for christmas I am going to crack all of the uh, Cards Against Humanity stuff. Uh, I have like four letters sitting like right over there uh, for uh, all the stuff they've sent me. I haven't even cracked them yet. So we're definitely going to do that. Um, and we're going to do it on stream. Maybe, maybe crack some Harry Potter. We're going to try to crack the last Harry Potter too. But that said, you know tomorrow tomorrow's uh my last day here before christmas so we'll see if i if i'm able you know like family's coming and you know whatever so uh i got big plans but the project i'm working on right now is fairly not simple but um i think i finally like wrapped my head around it i'm working on the uh cave carson annual um and uh it's uh it's really amazing and fun and uh i've wrapped my head around the artist now and and so it's flowing a little better um it's a little intimidating because that annual is like um 36 pages rather than the normal 20. so it's uh a little big to tackle but whatever, I'm managing, and I'm on schedule, so that's why that's why we're streaming. Cause I'm finally on schedule. <laughs> you wrapped your head around the artist, yeah, yeah, I did too. Uh, no, I mean like it's weird because like you know. So I I worked with Brent on uh, Howling Commandos of Shield, um, so I have like an idea of like how to make his stuff look good essentially and like every single time i tackle a new artist like it's an it's a different challenge like you can't really do the same thing on on everything 
Um, so it takes a while. Like it took me like three pages to three or four pages to like one solid day of me just like scratching my head being like, let's try this. Uh, that didn't really work. Let's try this. Uh, that didn't really work. Uh, we're going to, we're going to try this thing. Okay. Okay. This is starting to work. You know, like that was basically my whole thing. Like, the rules of comics. Here, here you go. There are only four rules you need to remember. Make the plan, execute the plan, expect the plan to go off the rails, throw away the plan. There you go. Rules of comics. Uh, so yeah. Made the plan, executed the plan, threw the plan away. And then, and then came up with something else. <laughs> uh... So yeah, it's the annuals, freaking amazing. By the way, um, we're gonna do a bunch of young animal stuff for uh, January because the trade comes out in February. I'm not sure when the annual comes out, but it, we're gonna there's gonna be like a uh, push on DC Comics' side. Um, they're gonna like start rolling stuff out. Um, for young animal and I want to roll stuff for young animal too. We're going to, we're going to try to work together. So that'll be fun. Um, I'm going to try to get, uh, Mike Oming on the stream too. We're going to, we're going to talk comics, maybe John Rivera too. I've actually never talked to John Rivera, who is the co-writer at cave Carson. And, uh, we've exchanged a lot of tweets and it would be cool to have him on. So yeah. We're, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about all the stuff we're going to do on stream. Um, it's going to be a blast. I'm like, if you can't, in case you can't tell, I'm like pumped for 2018. You know, the world is a trash fire right now, but this, at least the stream will be good. Right? Right? We'll be fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a laugh that's turning into a, into a cry. Um, I guess we don't need to have this up. The, so Batman's Batman's done. Like, uh, like I said, this one's this one's uh pretty. Oh, Hoke Hoquin. Welcome to high society, my friend. You are you are a member of the comic book coloring society. Thank you for the sub. Uh, as a sub, by the way, we don't need to keep this Batman piece open. This thing is done. Uh, as a sub, these are the, the raw flats, which are not pretty, but you know, it is what it is. Um, you get access in the discord to the sub stuff. Um, you can suggest art for the stream. Um, so you can suggest art for the stream and you can, uh, submit a portfolio and, uh, Boix is cheering in the chat. It's going nuts. Here's to survival. Uh, chat is exploding right now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you get you get access to both those things, Hulk Hoquin. Um, I uh, uh, encourage you to use them because you're you're in the Discord anyway. You're there anyway, so get in that sub Discord. Um, yeah, and if you got stuff you want critiques with, we can do it on stream or off stream or whatever. Like, and it's open to anybody who is a sub. So. Um, this Batman piece is done as far as flats go. Uh, I could, if I was like flatting this for another artist, like start doing details in the belt, but I know that I'm not going to do details in the belt. <laughs> and I know that like the city is going to be, I'm going to just kind of like pick and choose uh, lights and turn lights on and off. And like, that's pretty much all I'm going to do with the city. Um, at least that's what I think I'm going to do. Like we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um but yeah so this batman piece is pretty much done um as far as flats go so let's move on to the miracle piece uh we're gonna do the same thing i already preserved the line art it looks like um let's yeah there we go there's the line art okay all right let's uh let's do this one so this one's a little more, a little more complicated <laughs> than the Batman piece. 
Um, both of these, by the way, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but both of these are going to be available through Brent Schoonover. So if you go to a convention, um, he's going to make prints of these. If you see him at a con and you're like, you're like, oh man, that Batman piece turned out dope. You can, you can buy a print from him. Um, which I recommend doing. Uh, I actually, one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about was uh, there, there was a post that was floating around on Twitter that was like, how to support your local artist. And also um, Kyle Higgins was talking about how uh, like piracy within the industry and, and all that. And it's, you know, like I get it, you know, like I was a, a broke college kid and I pirated a lot of stuff. Uh, but I hit a point where I was like, I have a pretty good paycheck and I would like to um, support these creators that are making the things that I love. You know, like I, you know, if you want me to keep doing what I do, like pirating stuff is not the way to do it. If you enjoy the stuff you're pirating, eventually you should probably pick something up. I actually, so when the orange box came out uh, way back when, I think it's 10 years old by now. Um, the uh, I bought it from a GameStop used uh, and portal was so good. It like freaking blew my, uh, you know, I don't know. How old was I 10 years ago? Thir- 26. It blew my 26 year old mind so hard that I was like, I have to give Valve something. Because I know, like, GameStop just, like, reaped the reward, you know? Uh, so I was like, I got to I gotta give them something. So I, I bought um, a bunch of stuff from their store just because I was like, you guys made a great game and I want to support you. Um, I mean, Fat Lot of Good it did because <laughs> they don't think they've made anything since. <laughs> but, but you know, it's fine. Uh, it's, it's not fine. (laughs) They should make games. Um, however, my point in all of this was that, uh, you know, if you want to support your artist and you have a little bit of money, I suggest that you, if you are like, you know, like I can't buy comics on a regular basis, but I'll go to this show. Like, um, Valve makes games sometimes ish. Yeah. Uh, but like a good way to like, even if you are pirating, cause like, I want you to read stuff. I want you to read the stuff that I make, you know, like I'm not saying that you have carte blanche for piracy. I'm not advocating piracy. Like you should, if you enjoy something, you should buy it. Um, especially with comics because comics more than like, you know, when you, when you pirate, like the new transformers movie, it's like, well, that's a crew of like, you know, thousands of people. It's like a faceless corporation and like, you know, that kind of thing. But with comics, and I'm not saying that because of that, you should pirate that stuff. I'm just saying like, it's a little bit easier to justify when like with comics, it's like, okay, uh, I'm going to pirate this from those three guys over there, you know, like, that that's it like comics are uh, a medium that is like really just like you know less than a handful of people making something they love you know um so if you do go to a show like get something from like you know i 100 percent advocate digging through half off bins uh while you're there but you should also if you see an artist that you like you should pick something up like it really makes all the difference in the world, especially if the artist is not a superstar. If like the artist is like uh, coming up or is like a colorist or an inker that doesn't get necessarily as much attention, um, you know, like they will be totally appreciative, you know, uh, at any rate. So this post that was floating around was like, okay, so you don't have any money and you want to support an artist. Uh, the other things that you can do other than like, you know, heading to a con and like picking up a couple prints, um, is 
by the way, I'm doing this with the, the pencil tool, like flatting in these asteroids. Uh, this is fast and loose. <laughs> don't, don't be me. Don't do what I do. Don't look at this as, as a way to do this. In fact, I probably should just use the lasso. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't look at me. Uh, anyway, I don't know how... Oh my god, I used the lasso and it got worse. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professional's professional. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, so, uh, another way to support artists, if you're, if you're broke, is just, like, um, simple retweets and simple, uh, likes and interaction. Like if you read a comic that you really loved, um, tweeting about it, sharing it on social media, like that's the bread and butter right there. Like I, you know, it's so difficult. You have so many choices as a fan of comics to try things out, you know, that like, the only way to break through the noise and like try to compete with, you know, like the only way, the only way that heartthrob a book that I, I love that is like one of my underdogs right now. Um, you know, I think the story in heartthrob is top notch. The art is incredible. It's like, it has no reason that it's not a triple a book. Um, but it's from a small publisher, uh, that people might not even be aware of. And like, if you're a Wiccan divine reader, like you'll probably love heartthrob, but you know, trying to break through the noise is tough. So like, you know, if the, if it's ever going to compete with like DC metal and like stuff like that, like the giant DC universe crossover, like you need word of mouth. You need people talking about it. Um, we just released issue five last month, month before, um, or sorry, a couple weeks ago or last month, something like that. Um, and, uh, it had a crazy, crazy cliffhanger, like, twist ending that was like fucking nuts that you will not see coming and you know like we had uh one person tweet at us and like that person was so excited about it it made my day it's like a small small thing that you can do to support the artists around you um just let them know that you like their stuff that you actually read it because sometimes it feels like i'm not gonna lie sometimes it feels like you're making stuff in a vacuum like that you're just sitting alone in a room and then you put stuff out there and then you get no response and then you sit alone in a room and then you put stuff out there and you get no response. Like it's, it's crazy. It is like, uh, we've been there with video content before. Yeah. I mean, I feel like any creator of anything gets this, you know, like, um, I'm sure that people who make small independent movies, I'm sure that, people who make just like magic drafts and put them up on YouTube, like the fan interaction, just getting involved and just being like, Hey, I like your stuff, you know, uh, we'll keep a creator creating, you know, it, it will, uh, it like motivates you. Um, so I don't know if you, if you want to support your local artists, like, that's another way to do it is what I'm saying. Um, and you can do that on, on like any and all platforms. Like I, w you're watching this either on Twitch or YouTube. Um, but you know, like I have my social media stuff is right above my head here in the corner and like freaking throw me some likes, throw me some comments. Like if you dig what I'm doing, like the only way that, and plus this is the other thing too. The rough part of be about being a smaller creator is those silent moments. Yeah, man, I, so Hulk Hogan said that, and I still feel like a smaller creator, you know, like I look at people like, but the thing is, is that like, you know, my barometer for stuff is it's weird because it's like, um, you know, P 
people are following uh, writers really intensely right now in comics. And, and then there's like superstar artists like, uh, you know, Jim Lee and like, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, Greg Capullo or whatever that are getting like, you know, 20,000, 30,000, you know, I don't know, 100,000 followers on, on Twitter, you know? And it's like, they have like this giant audience that they, that they deserve. They, they work really hard and they do what they do. But like within the pie chart of comics, like people who care about the colorist is already like a small sliver. And then for someone to even follow a colorist, like I, and I'm not trying, I'm not trying to like, you know, angle or guilt people for to like follow me or whatever i'm just saying i'm saying this in general and i you know uh i'm not saying you have to follow you you should be following me that's that's not how this should come across (laughs) um what i'm saying is is if you dig shit get involved that's all that's all that i'm saying it doesn't have to be me as long as it's like something you love and something you're excited about freaking you know, let people know. I, I feel like a small creator compared, compared to like people that are my peers, like, uh, Matt Wilson and Jordi Belair, like they have a huge following on Instagram and, uh, uh, Twitter. And part of that is because I adopted both those platforms later than them. So they just have had time on the platform. Um, and I'm still trying to figure that stuff out. Like part of, uh, <laughs> you won't say it, but I will, you should be following Nick. Uh, I, I tweet some jokes out there. Uh, if, if chances are, if you like the stream, you'll, you'll enjoy my feed. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, like, you know, so I, I sometimes feel like a small creator. I put a lot of stuff out there that, that gets like, you know, like 50 likes and that's it. And it's just like, well, I spent, spent like all day on that, whatever. It's fine. But like, it's also, you know, that's the battle is like, you know, building from the base up. You got to be patient. You just got to be patient. And I, I love all my followers. Like they, uh, a lot of them interact regularly and I'm like starting to see like, you know, um, people who like regularly interact and I'm looking forward to like seeing people at cons and stuff. So, you know, if, if you want to stand out from the crowd and just like, you know, uh, for any creator, you know, like interact. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a tall order at, at any rate. Those are like simple, simple things you can do to, to help creators that you love is like retweet their tweets. Uh, when they put work out there on Twitter and you retweet it to your followers, like it has the potential to grow. Um, and just like simple follows and simple interactions. Like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't cost a lot. It doesn't cost anything. And you know, it means the world. So yeah. Um, (laughs) jokes, yeah uh i uh man i so i'm gonna do some some content coming up for uh you that's gonna be youtube exclusive uh some some uh some jokes out of the joke book coming up and uh i think the cracking of all the um cards gets humanity stuff that's gonna be exclusive to youtube so it's non-comic book stuff but it's still like i don't know fun fun things i'm trying to like experiment with like all the different platforms so we've colored mr miracle like three times and i have no idea what he looks like the professional's professional you're gonna we're all gonna wait while i try to uh look up what he looks like this is quality stream this is why you do not follow me (laughs) Uh, green. It's a green cape, guys. 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 Green cape. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, some green, some orange, a yellow arrow. Just wing it. <laughs> yeah, throw in some plaid. I don't know. <laughs> um. Yeah, so that's that's kind of my rant on on uh, creators, and I you know I'm not even beyond advocating for myself. Like I I follow and adamantly tweet about stuff that I love um, because I know how valuable it is. I think this is Cape back here. Is this Cape? Cape in the crotch. Um, like I am a big fan of Redlands. Um, Jordi Belair not only colors it, but it's the first series that she uh, wrote and it is awesome. It is, she's stupid talented. And so I, I advocate it all the time. Um, you know, Mitch's run on Mr. Miracle with Tom King is, I think is like some of the best stuff out there right now. Uh, so I talk about it. Um, man, I, I fell behind on those books though, because, uh, work was, was cannibalizing my time. Um, I gotta catch up. I gotta catch up over the winter break. You should send in a project that you colored <laughs> with glitter, glue, and pipe cleaners. You know, I feel like if I did that with the right project, like if I did that on a, on a, uh, like a, a Cave Carson flashback, it would almost fit. Like if the, if the execution was high enough, like people would be like, oh, you went, you went with the macaroni techniques, uh, just gluing cold macaroni to this page, huh? I like it. I like where your head's at. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it could it could work. <laughs> uh, I, that's the thing. That's the one of the reasons why I love Cave Carson. By the way, is because like Gerard has carved out this space where it's just like, hey, you want to experiment? Go freaking crazy! Like as long as it's like an interesting comic at the end of the day that's all he cares about you know um and he actually he wrote me a very nice quick email the other day that was like because we were i was talking about the uh what what we wanted to do with the annual and he was like he threw out some suggestions and he was like he was like your instincts are usually like 100 percent on point he was like i'll defer to whatever you want to experiment with so i was like yeah i'll take that I'll take that all day Obviously, just glue a bunch of plaid swatches to your <laughs> to your next cave. Yeah, he's in space, so I don't know if if plaid's gonna really come up that much. <laughs> um. All right, all right. What do you look like? Who even are you? Scott Free. Let's do this. All right. Um. But yeah, so uh, in addition to that, the other thing that I saw floating around was like, you know, if you guys want to get want to get weird and esoteric with with uh, plot as a transcendent medium, I, I'm not gonna click that YouTube link right now. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle it. Um, so. Uh, there was like, I've been thinking a lot about, um, you know, goals for 2018. First of all, first of all, which if you're, if you're an artist, you should be thinking about that too. Uh, I recently was listening to the creative pep talk podcast, which I am a big fan of. Um, if you are a creative person, you might dig it as well. Uh, Andy pizza, Andy J pizza does the podcast and he, uh, baseball one. They've gone to plaid. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, sometimes gets a little, gets a little, gets a little weird, gets a little like spiritual almost with it, which is like, kind of starts to get off the rails for me, but like mostly it's good advice. And, um, he was talking about in this last one about how you should set three goals and you should think about your dreams and then cut them in half essentially. Um, 
and I think it's all good advice. So I was thinking about like the goals that I want for 2018. And one of them is going to be to grow the stream. Um, so I know that we've been a little bit lax as far as the stream goes in between uh, Thanksgiving and uh, December or Thanksgiving and Christmas, but we are going to be like a hundred percent on track uh, come the new year. Um, dream really big then. <laughs> yeah. I think you're defeating the purpose. If you just like, okay, we're going to cut the dreams in half. All right. We'll double the dreams. <laughs> he was saying like, you know, if like your end goal is to like, if you're a writer, like write for the New York times, then you should be like, okay, cut the dream in half and then be like, what's a goal. That's like half of that, that I can like work towards, you know, like something achievable so that you can look back and be like, Oh, I, you know, like I spent this year. Well, I worked towards it, but even though I didn't necessarily get there yet, you know, for a lot of people who probably watch this stream, it would be like, you know, breaking into comics, getting your own comic first comic book made, you know, um, not even breaking in, but just like getting your first comic book, totally 100% made 22 pages out the door, like stack of comics arrive on your doorstep to sell at, at conventions or over Etsy or whatever. Uh, like that would be huge for probably a lot of people. Um, so, uh, you know, one of my things is like growing, growing the stream. We're going to try to do, um, a lot more interviews here, uh, because I really dug that. I don't know if I'm going to be coloring during the interviews when I was trying to like juggle that with Charlie. Thankfully, Charlie is a talker. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, we did an interview. If you, in case you guys don't know with Charlie Chu about how to pitch comic books. Um, he's an ex editor at Oni press. Uh, so, all right. I'm trying to figure out what Scott's got going on here. Green boots. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm excited about all those things. Uh, the other thing is going to be, you know, me obviously doing the sketchbooks cause, uh, sketchbook a day is going to be, going to be tough, but we're going to, we're going to sketchbook page a day. It's going to be tough, but we're going to, we're going to try to get through it. Um, and I'm excited to tackle it, man. I got my stuff in the mail the other day. Uh, I got a mixed media sketchbook that's got, uh, I think 26 pages in it. Uh, that's like a heavier cardstock. And then just like a regular sketchbook that is, um, a hundred pages. And man, I want, I see that thing sitting there and I want to attack it. And I hope that if you guys are doing the sketchbook challenge with me, um, that you want to attack yours as well. All right, I think Scott Free, Mr. Miracle, is done. Now we just got to do the parademons. Um, and to do those, I have to figure out what parademons look like. <laughs> is it going to link me? Is it going to link me to a bunch of movie stuff? It is. It is not. Oh, man, are they are they green and yellow, too? Jack Kirby, what are, you, what are you doing to me, dog? Yo, Jack Kirby, dog. My dog. <laughs> if he heard me call him dog, he would punch me in the face. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, Jack Kirby was a pretty tough dude. <laughs> um, Try to find good ref for parademons. Uh, I'm using the simplest ref ever and it looks like they're just straight up green and, and yellow like green and gold um, this is what they look like apparently costume wise um, we're using uh, an animated series ref from the Superman show. That's usually my point of reference for everything, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do I have ideas written down or thumbnails yet? We're starting next week. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm actually going to spend a little bit. I don't want to like, okay, here's the thing. I don't want to like get ahead of myself in the process, you know? Um, 
Like, I want it to be kind of spontaneous. The sketchbook stuff. Uh, I want it to be... Because, like, if I, like... The more I think... Of, like, I have thoughts and ideas and stuff, like, in my head. And there's, like, a bunch of fan art stuff. But, like, if I spend a day, like, thumbnailing stuff on a sketch page, like that's my day. Like, I don't want to like, I mean, Kate, I I assume you're joining me in the sketchbook challenge. Are you, uh, you, you are in the discord. And I think you said that you were going to, you posted a sketchbook page. I know, I know you're ready. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I was going to be like, you know, if I spend like, an hour trying to figure out like, you know, light and dark values for this piece, then, um, I kind of want to like be like, okay, that was my hour for the day. Here's a sketchbook of thumbnails. Um, you, yes, you have a lot to work on this upcoming year. Nice. I'm glad you'll be, you'll be in the trenches with me. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I have some things in mind and it's probably going to be a lot of thumbnailing before executions. Um, but even the executions are going to be like, I don't know. I'm not holding like the thing is, is like, if I start thinking about like, this is kind of like my own hangups, uh, as far as, uh, you know, my own, my own crap going on art school like really turned me around like really messed with my head and uh like the level of craft that they preached um made me kind of like take all the took all the fun out of everything like i was like i'm gonna do this fun doodle and they were like well can we can we expand that into a thing like can we uh do you think that those tangents are working do you and i'm like this is just a fun thing i just want that's all i want it to be is a fun thing like i just want to be like creatively moving in a direction that i enjoy you know (laughs) and it's like i don't want to think about i don't want to like turn that voice on that's like going to criticize everything that i've like cultivated from art school um because i know that like you know i haven't drawn in 10 years like the drawings are not going to be top level So it's like, it's less about thumbnailing and then making a finished piece and then refining and refining. I mean, if it turns into that, that's fine. But like, I don't want to put that added pressure on me, you know, like, oh, now, now I thumbnail. Oh, now I refine. Like, if I just want to like do a doodle of like a, uh, you know, a Wolverine that, is a uh, clone that was not successful (laughs) like a little bit of an oopsie then like you know that's what i want to do like (laughs) uh and i just want to like make a fun cartoon um i don't want to like try to put too much pressure on myself because i think that's how i end up not drawing for 10 years to be completely honest um so the parademon skin is like kind of this brownish color but we're gonna i saturated it up a little bit in the flats we'll figure out in the finals if we're actually gonna do that or not um i don't know we'll figure it out uh but yeah so yeah that's my kind of my two cents on the on the where I'm going to be at for this. So like, basically what I'm saying is, is like, if you want to join me in the sketchbook challenge, like don't expect me to like, you know, this is a thing that's going to sit on discord. Like I'm not putting this on, on Twitter really. Um, and the reason for that is because like, and let me stress this, you know, it's going to be a low stakes environment. <laughs> like it's not going to be like, Oh, let's do a sketchbook challenge a day. And here's my finished comic book that has pencils, inks, colors, you know, like it's not going to be like that. Like, come join me. Let's just have a good time. Uh, yeah. 
So, uh, by the way, Ben, what I what what I was gonna say before was, uh, we were talking about creative, or I was talking about since I'm the only one talking. Right, right, got there. Okay, um, <laughs> uh, creative pep talk is real good, and it's got me thinking about um, you know, like why we make art and. Uh, what is exciting and how we learn about art. And then while I was thinking, while I was thinking about that, um, I've been, so I went to art school with uh, a bunch of really talented people, including um, Sean Murphy was in one class above me. And if you're into comics, you know who Sean Murphy is. Uh, He and I hung out uh, a bit when we were in, in college and uh, I catch up with him every once in a while at shows um but you know like his time is like crazy valuable now and uh you know he's kind of a comic book superstar uh which is fine he deserves it like he's very very talented but uh he tweeted the other day something that like kind of ruffled my feathers which is like not uncommon for sean by the way he's he says exactly what he thinks all the time uh which is you know who he is it's it's which is kind of something i respect about him um he doesn't pull any punches but he uh tweeted about how when he makes comics he doesn't see any kind of amuse with it he just sees like a math problem and i thought that was like the saddest tweet that i have like read in a long time like it really like took the wind out of my sails and Sean comes from a place where he is like be at your desk every day draw every day this is not about inspiration this is not about uh you going with the flow this is about a regimented schedule of output and like he leans into I think craft more than uh anyone I've ever met like for him is he the Spock of comics uh I don't know maybe maybe (laughs) uh no I mean like he's he's emotional like he cares about things it was just like I don't know it's his relationship with comics is very complicated but uh at any rate or maybe it's not I don't know I don't want to speak for him but I just want to like talk about that post that he made um he when we were in school together he also like did a couple years of sequential art and then switched over to illustration because he felt like he wasn't getting anything out of the sequential art program and then which is understandable the sequential art program was kind of meh um a repetition of like a lot of the same projects over and over again but like i don't know that he got anything more out of the illustration department i don't know that'd be something to ask him but anyway um I've been thinking a lot about like why I do what I do and what I get excited about and like trying to learn new techniques and trying to, you know, like things going off the rails, things changing. If I sit down and I know exactly how things are going to go in a sense. uh, Yeah. You saw that tweet too. Kind of depressing. Yeah. If I sat down and like knew how everything was going to go, I'd be like, well, why are we doing this? You know, like there's no sense of adventure. Like there's no exploration. There's no, you know, like if it's just math, it's kind of like, well, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm also like coming from a place like to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. I'm coming from this, this place of like right now, like comics has like lit a fire under me. Like, I am so excited about comics. I'm excited about the stream. I'm excited about, you know, like, uh, sharing process with you guys. Um, I'm excited about all that stuff. And I'm excited about getting you guys excited about it. You know, like, I hope it rubs off on you because, like, you know, being on fire like this is, like, the greatest feeling in the world. Um, And that tweet was, like, such an antithesis of, like, this momentum that, I've been like trying to like cultivate over the last couple of years. Um, 
that it was like kind of weird. I don't know. Uh, at any rate, I have this crazy momentum and I'm starting to dabble into like digital painting a little bit and I'm excited about that. Um, and I'm, I'm ex- the part of the reason why I'm excited, especially about the sketchbook stuff is because like, I don't know where it's going to go. And then I'm like, this is really, really fun. And like, you know, if, if I knew, like, I think about it like this, you know, like one of the things that gets me really excited about comics is that I don't know what comics I'm going to make in the next year. Like this past year. I started working with Jeremy Hahn on uh, the realm and the realm is one of the most technically advanced comics that I've ever made. Um, Just as far as like nuts and bolts, Photoshop um, there's just like a lot going on and I'm experimenting with a lot of like new techniques in it um, that I didn't know how each issue was going to look issue to issue, which was like real fun. And I think that that translates well to the page. And if you look at the first issue of the realm and you look at issue five, that's about to come out. Like you can see me like figuring the book out. Why isn't this working? There we go. Yeah. You can see me like figuring things out. Like it's like subtly changes. Um, over the course of the book, like for the better. And I'm excited about the next, uh, arc that we're going to do to like further innovate. And the thing that really excites me is like, I don't know what it's going to look like. You know, your drawing teacher was like that. Um, and another one, another person, you know, is like that. I feel like it's approaching art by logic and purposeful action is fine. If that's how they work anyway. Yeah. I mean, it might just be his headspace, but like, and I'm not, I'm not advocating like what I'm saying is, is like there is something exciting within, within the realm that I didn't know I was capable of and exploring that and growing was really fun and really worthwhile. And like, uh, you know, kind of amazing and i didn't know that that was going to happen in this last year of making comics um and like to sit here and be like well i'm just going to do what i do and then and then uh i might grow a little bit but then we're just going to be done i just i don't know man it like i just don't understand it you know um it just doesn't i don't know it just doesn't click with me I feel like when I felt like that, it was when I was in my twenties and I was making the worst work that I was making in my career. Um, there was a, a time that I was like kind of depressed and didn't know it. And I was just like, well, I'll just do what I do and then like color this thing and then play some call of duty and then like wait for the next thing and then just do what I do. And then, you know, like, and I didn't realize it, but I was like really burnt out and like, I wasn't having fun and, uh, it showed in the work, you know? Um, and I'm not saying that it shows in Sean's work. Sean's Sean's very talented. I mean, maybe he can tell if it shows in his work, but I can't tell. Um, you know, this is not about like bagging on Sean. I'm just saying that like one of the things that I'm focusing on in, 2018 is like and the things that i'm thinking about are like why am i doing this and what makes me excited about doing this um and how do i explore being excited about comics you know what i mean like and beyond comics like you know i'm excited to like not limit myself you know if if i'm doing a sketchbook stuff and i'm like man comics are fun and all and like wolverine's great but i'm gonna do 15 landscapes in a row uh and then we're gonna digital paint landscapes that's what we're gonna do like i i want to explore you know the things that uh you know are gonna be like exciting i don't know 
And then like, you know, I see Sean being like excited about cars and I'm like, dude, why are you not? I mean, not that I don't want you to make comics because like your comics are beautiful, but like, you know, like, I don't know. Why, why aren't you doing something with cars? <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, I'm oversimplifying. It's not as easy as that, but yeah, I, uh, it's tough too, because you know, you, you need the day job and you need the, the, we can't just all just, you know, uh, follow our passion a hundred percent of the time every day. That's not realistic. Uh, there are some books, uh, thankfully not right now, but, uh, everything on my workload right now is all stuff that I like really love and believe in. But, uh, there are sometimes when I've taken books cause I'm just like, Oh God, I need a paycheck. <laughs> but I don't know part of, and part of that too is like, especially if you're a colorist because you have limited control over, um, the art that you're working on is like, how do you find the stuff that lights your fire in the art? Like you got to find something that excites you. Otherwise you're going to be like, if I took a six month project, which is like typical in comics, you know, five or six months at a time, you work on an arc of, of something. Um, and I don't find anything interesting in there. Like we're going to have a problem. Like I'm going to be miserable for like, Yo, six months. I don't want to do that. Who wants to do that? I don't know. So it's t it's tough to like, I don't know. You got to be like, you got to weighing that is also very, very difficult as a, as an artist. Um, and I don't know that I do it appropriately every time. Um, there's some times where I'm like, I shit, I need a book. And then like, there's other times where I'm like, I have to pass on this because, you know, reason xyz i actually um uh was asked to do a project that i passed on because i couldn't like give it the time that it deserved you know like i was very focused this year on like okay what do i what do i actually have time for like not spread myself thin and do quality work all year which is a goal that i feel like i accomplished um all the stuff that I've put out this year. If, if you are following the stream and, and you've checked out any of the comics that are up there flashing by, uh, all the comics that I felt like I put out this year, I've really um, been 100% behind. Um, but yeah, so I, I've been trying to not, you know, overextend, which is like a big thing in comics. Um, a lot of people do it. Uh, I've been guilty of it before in the past. And I had to pass on this book that I really wanted to take. And I really think I could have brought a lot too, but you know, it breaks your heart. Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta say no. Cause I knew that if I took it, I wouldn't be able to give it the love that it deserved. I don't know. We're kind of all over the place in this discussion, but, uh, basically what, what I want to convey to you guys is that to, to like kind of round it all out is that like, you know, try to make good choices out there. Try to, try to like, think about what, like, excites you and, like, makes you curious and, and, you know, kind of like, I don't know, lights your fire. Like, what, what are you into? And then, like, go for it, you know? And it's, it's okay to, like, drop things for a while. Like, for a long time, I was really, really into magic and really, really into video games. And then like, uh, just kind of got done. Um, not so much with video games. I've since like started picking them up again. Uh, but with magic, I was just kind of like, eh, I'm just kind of done and that's okay. You know, like you can take breaks, you can walk away. Um, the one thing that like part of the reason why, uh, I'm still doing comics and, uh, having fun with them still is because like comics, as far as like collecting and reading and stuff like that, like the one constant in my life, uh, like I'll get excited about stuff and, uh, you know, hobbies and, and stuff will come and go. Comics has always consistently been there. Um, I've always had some level of interest in comics 
since I was like 14. So, you know, a good like 20 years. 20, 22 years. Oh my God, it's been that long. That's a long, that's a long time. Uh, so yeah, I just like, I just know, like, I just feel it like comics and me, we're going to be doing this till we, till we're in the grave. Uh, yeah, it's weird. I do this thing. I don't know if you guys do this, um, guys and girls out there, uh, in TV land, but I do this thing where I get super excited about and throw myself in for, and it's like, it's almost like clockwork five years. I will dive into something for five years at a time. And like, you know, when I was in high school, I can tell you like what, what it was when I was in high school, it was action figures and sculpting. And then when I was in uh, college, it was like, you know, all the college stuff that I had to do. I like totally dived in. Um, like went above and beyond on projects and stuff like that. And then when I got out of college, it was, uh, first person shooters like, and video games in general, but mostly first person shooters. And then, uh, after I got out of that, it was, uh, magic, the gathering. Uh, and then now I, I guess it's like back, we're back to comics. Maybe it's streaming. I don't know. I don't know what it is right now. I'm figuring it out. Um, but yeah, you guys should, should, if you're an aspiring creator or, uh, you know, thinking about like what you want to, what you want to make, don't, don't limit yourself like to just, just be like, Oh, I'm just going to make comics. Like just make cool shit. The place that you land will, will come. It'll, you will figure it out. Okay, we got to figure out these harnesses. Speaking of figuring stuff out. So, like, the parademons have, like, some kind of, like, harness thing on here. So, we got to, like, do that. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Let's, I guess this is, like, part of it. I'm going to, I think after I flat this, we're going to run it by Brent and be like, is this what you intended, my friend? Um, yeah, I know I said this before, but if you're just, if you're just joining us, these are uh, commissioned for comic cons and um, they will be available uh, for purchase from uh, Brent Schoonover. If you see him at a show and you want to get something that, uh, you know, he and I both work on, uh, these, these pieces will be, this is actually the first thing that you can buy from the both of us since Howling Commandos, which was God, a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, we put together some pitches actually, uh, just recently that, uh, didn't end up going anywhere cause them's the breaks, but, uh, which is fine. You know, like Charlie said, uh, pitches get uh, rejected for all different kinds of reasons and it doesn't have to be the quality of the, the pitch. Um, so I'm not heartbroken over it. And eventually we're going to be, I'm going to be able to, once enough distance has happened, I'm going to put some of the art for those pitches up on uh, my Instagram because they were kind of rad. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little bit bummed about one of them because one of them was real, real fun. Uh, at any rate, this is the first thing that we've worked together publicly um, on other than, I guess, no, we're, we're doing like wrestling covers, um, but you don't get a lot of wiggle room in the wrestling covers. Like, okay. I got to think about these dots. Like, is this all part of the same harness? Maybe, maybe it is. I can't tell. Maybe we'll try to separate, uh, you know, we'll do like a 50% fill 
on on some of these we'll do all like the gold pieces and then we'll do a 50 percent fill on the harness or on like their the tops of them i guess um i don't know see how that looks Like this fin is probably a part of it. Uh, this leg is not. Kind of in, in deep focus as I'm trying to like solve the puzzle here. Speaking of solve the puzzle, still thinking about that. I, I tweeted about this. This woman on uh, Wheel of Fortune, so like the local, we, I watch the local news uh, and and then the national news, because um, I like to to feel bad, I guess. <laughs> um, and uh, Wheel of Fortune comes on after that, and like so the char the characters, the uh, people will be introducing themselves uh, as. I'm like, you know, leashing up the dog to, to, you know, take him on his, uh, evening walk. And this woman said something to me that like rattled me to my core. She said, and I quote, where's Waldo is my favorite game. And I can't shake it. Like, is it? I never even considered where was Waldo to be a game period. Like, is it a game? I thought it was something that like happens in a waiting room when you're like, I don't know, like waiting, you know, <laughs> you know I'm, like, I, I don't know how to describe it other than that. Discount on green spandex. Yeah. Parademons. Okay, so this is going to be the part of the problem with this with this piece. Speaking of green spandex, discounts on green spandex. Uh, so like, the pair demons are green. This is obviously slightly a little darker than this stuff, but uh, so the pair demons are green, but then like, miracle is also green, and then they're also green and warm. Like they have a warm skin tone too. And so does Mr. Miracle over here. They're like basically the same colors and we're going to have to separate them. That's going to be one of the challenges within the next piece uh, when we start to get into colors. But I think for now we're like kind of done. Um, kind of putting finishing touches on this. Um Yeah, I think this is flatted, flatted well enough. Um, the wings and the top demon. Oh, Brent did? Well, I mean, I don't know. There can be variations. This guy could be like a weird ground guy, or maybe he had his wings ripped off or whatever. I don't know. Uh, look, man, I ain't the storyteller. Uh... All right, let's save this. So, guys, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's right up there. I'm joking around all week. If you if you missed it, you missed it. Um, also, follow me on Twitch right here, right here in this space or YouTube. If it's if you're watching on YouTube, that's fine too. Um, we're going to finish off these uh, two pieces from Brent Schoonover. I'm probably going to be streaming tomorrow, um, and we're going to tackle all that. Uh, but for today, this was a nice little chill stream. Uh, we just did some flats. No big deal. Boom, boom, boom. We're all done. Uh, hopefully, I'll be streaming tomorrow. Uh, we'll at least stream one of these pieces. I kind of want to try to stream the... Uh, last box of Harry Potter as well. So we'll see if we have time for that or not. I wanted to get it done by Christmas, but we might have to push it to get it done by new year's. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that's, that's going to be it. I hope that, uh, you know, and we'll talk, we'll talk more about, um, 
goals for 2018 and and art and stuff uh next time when we're when we get into these colors i'm going to talk process with the colors as as usual so stay tuned for that um and i will see you tomorrow later guys